Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is known for his hit series, Preachers of LA, Detroit, and Atlanta, and his new show, Married to Funny. He is the producer of BET's new series, Music Mogul, starring Birdman, Jermaine Dupree, Snoop Dogg, and Dame Dash. I want you to help me welcome Mr. Lemuel Plummer to the show. Welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. How are you? Oh, really? Oh, you know what? First, I want to say this. I'm doing good. <laughs> but you are a young man that I've admired because I've kind of followed your career because of your youthfulness and what you have been doing in the industry. So first, I want to say congratulations to all of your success. Oh, thank you so much. It's really appreciated. And um, I want to talk to you about for those who may not know who you are, they know your work, but they don't necessarily know you. So I want to kind of give the audience a um, a little history about you and how did your career began in the entertainment industry, especially in reality television? Yes, absolutely. Well, I, I uh, executive produced a lot of unscripted reality or docu-series type programming. Um, I have a full-service production company. Uh, I started... Um, You know, back when I was 12 years old, my parents owned and operated several television networks in Michigan and New Orleans, some other places, and learned a lot from them. Came to uh, uh, L.A. uh, and worked my way up, and I always knew I wanted to create and produce television and got a lot of opportunity. I I had a first look deal at BET when I was 22, Um, sold my first show at 22 as well. So I was running an executive producing uh, series called Vindicated with my brother and business partner at the time, Jason Tobert and LJ uh, Plummer. And uh, from there, I just, I, I, you know, I started my own company, ended up working on Mary Mary and also uh, this year to, uh, we had two seasons at BET. Um, and, you know, from there we, we uh, ended up creating and developing a show with Holly Carter called Creatures of LA. Came a, a, a smash hit at Oxygen, and we franchised it to, like you said, Detroit and Atlanta, and then uh, ended up selling Living with Funny to Oxygen, and and um, and now Music Mobile, which I'm really excited about, and and, and a few other shows that I'm, I'm sure I didn't mention. No, it's so funny because you said when I was 22, you still look 22. <laughs> How are you preserving <laughs> your youth? <laughs> Yeah, I, well, you know, I'm still a young a young guy. You know, um, I am. Um, I'm just, you know, I I, I have this this uh, youthful look. I don't know. I think I, I just I just have good genes, and but I'm still young. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm 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 excited to just be a young person in the business, really having this opportunity. So uh, it's exciting. I, I want to really. I mean, my slogan at my company is really to to change a generation, and that's that's really what I'm all about. And these shows are are hopefully going to inspire, impact, entertain, spark conversations with, with with my generation. So I'm just excited. With you looking so youthful, was it difficult for people to take, did you have a difficult time of people taking you seriously? <laughs> Absolutely. You know, <laughs> that's, that's been a weakness. There's been a weakness and a strength. Um, but, you know, uh, in this business, you know, no, no one can really deny you know, the gifts and talent that God has put inside of you. Mm-hmm. And for me, I've been very blessed to uh, have amazing opportunities where even though uh, people might have looked at the outward parents and might not have taken me seriously, you know, uh, when, we, when we've actually got into business together, you know, the networks and my partners were, were very excited and, and, and they felt very comfortable and felt like it, 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 it's a great partnership. So, um, yeah, it, it's a challenge sometimes, but it goes. Um, I usually don't have to worry about that anymore. I've, I've had to pay my dues, and, and I've done that. And, you know, I'm just, at this point, it's just about making great television and programming, and and, uh, and, and the networks trust me. And, and I'm, 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 I'm plugging away. <laughs> plugging away. <laughs> Do you ever get flat? Because I know you're a Christian. I believe your your father is a pastor, and then you did the you do the shows, Preachers of LA, Detroit, and Atlanta. You also did the show with the Sheards, and also Mary Mary. Now, you know we see the Living with Funny, and then also we have the Music Moguls. Do people try to put you in a box because you are a Christian, and then you were doing Christian television, and now people think you're doing secular? Do you feel like sometimes people will put you in the box because you are a Christian? You know, it, it, yes, yes and no. Um, I, I feel, you know, sometimes you could be put in a box, but for me, you know, I've never 
I've never created programming that's salacious and conflict driven. Even when you watch moguls, it is a different world, but I'm not about creating programming that's going to spark so much controversy or get a lot of backlash. Um, I've just never been that type of producer. My production companies, we don't, we don't produce shows like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think the faith based community, um, trust me and, and they, uh, they, they watch the programming, whether or not they feel it's faith based programming or not. That, that's not, you know, that's not really what I think God has called me to do. I, I feel like He called me to be a great storyteller, to be a light in darkness, to really tell people's stories and in a, in a positive, compelling, entertaining way. And, um, I've been blessed, like I said, to just be able to experience these different worlds from the faith-based community, with the Preachers franchise, to In Mary Mary and the Shears, to the comedy world with Living with Funny, and now music at a really high level. You know, um, you know, the faith-based community may they may judge it because of who these people are, but you know. As an executive producer and being the person telling their story, I've, I've got a chance to really learn who these guys are. They give back, you know. The, a lot of the, the moguls are 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 very philanthropic, and um, you know, they're, it's inspiring because you you've seen these guys, most of them come from nothing, and now they're impacting the world, and and now giving back. You know, with a Snoop, J.D., Dame, Birdman. These guys are all good guys, and I've been fortunate to really get an inside look at, at, as far as who they really are, mm-hmm. not just about the perception of others um, based upon images or, or little, you know, interstitial or videos or small, you know, uh, clips that they see on, on, on the Internet or on television. But that's the, that's the great thing about the Music Mogul show is that you really get a chance to see who these guys really are. And I think... The faith-based community, they watch all sorts of secular mm-hmm. programming. Yep. You know, they, mm-hmm. Empire, Empire mm-hmm. is a hit, mm-hmm. you know, and um, this is the real-life Empire, this mm-hmm. show. So I think we're going to get the best of both worlds to watch and, and to uh, get a chance to really get inside peeking inside of these guys' world in their lives. Now, Ray J is also one of the producers of this show, for those who didn't know. How did you and Ray J even come together to partner to do this show? Well, I've known Ray J and his sister Brandy for, for many years now. And, um, you know, we've, we've always talked about doing something together. And when I created the idea, uh, I ended up pitching it to Stephen Hill, the president of BT. He loved it. Green with the project straight to series off of a bird. What happened before um, with me, um, you know, usually you have to put a presentation together and, you know, try to pitch it and sell it and do all this this stuff, but I was fortunate to get a series offer, and then after I got uh, the green light to move forward with the project, um, I brought Ray J in, because I don't I don't know the music world, uh, I didn't know the music world like that, and um, he really helped educate me, and, and he introduced me to a lot of the uh, moguls that uh, you see on the series, and um, and and, uh, and, and he helped develop the project, so he, he's a great partner, a great friend, and I'm excited to be working with him. He has a lot of other businesses that he's doing, and uh, he's a mobile in the make, making himself. So uh, it, it was great, great uh, working with him, and we have other things that we've been discussing. But, um, yeah, he's, he's an EP with me on the project. How did you get these big moguls to say yes to this particular project? You know, Honestly, it, 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 it boils down to trust. You know, the mobile, um, they, 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 they want to be a part of anything that they feel is going to be hot, beneficial to them. And, you know, uh, with, with, regarding the mobile, um, you know, we, 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 when we mentioned the project, you know, we told them that this would be a great platform for them not only just from the artists, but give the viewers an inside look at how they run their empire, their businesses, how they balance out their personal lives with, with their careers. Um, and uh, honestly, they were excited about it, but then it boiled down to trust. And when they saw and heard about some of the projects that I've done, it felt like, you know, this is, this is not 
like some of the other programming that's on television. And, and they trusted me to tell their story. And although, you know, people may question Ray J is a part of, um, it's, it's not love and hip hop. It's not any of those shows. And I'm not bashing those shows. I think they're, they're grateful with, with, you know, with, what they, what they, what they do now. But, you know, my type of producing and storytelling is different. So they, they trusted it and they, they gave me the opportunity to tell their story. And they're very, very happy with the outcome. Now, as an executive producer, you have been pretty successful in selling shows to the network. As you are thinking about a show to pitch to the networks, what are the ingredients that every show needs to have to make it appealing to a network to even make them say yes to a project? You know, it's um, right now we're in a very, very interesting time where uh, the net, you, you see a lot of changes happening in television. Um, you know, people are watching television uh, different than how they used to. You know, most people want to watch their convenience choice and control now on demand. They DVR things. So it's actually a lot more difficult to get uh, network execs to buy programming like they were a couple of years ago. Um, so you just have to make sure that your presentation is top notch. And for me, I, and I can't make this up, every single project that I've been able to sell has gone straight to series. Wow. I never had to do a pilot. I never had to do a presentation. I'm very, I, I have great agents. Um, and at the end of the day, I have a great development team. And but at the end of the day, we put together the best presentation. And I, I tell people all the time, you get one shot, first impression is everything. You want somebody to invest millions of dollars into a series, you know, um, and, you know, whether you, I mean, you've got to be willing to put up your own money or find someone who would invest in a presentation, a sizzle reel, uh, a compelling deck to be able to go into a network, you know, and, and then take you seriously. And, you know, you want to ha- you want to kind of scope out the land and see what, what's actually working on television, you know, and you, you want to be able to, 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 to see, you know, how are these shows rating? Um, what, what's actually, like nowadays, it's important that, you know, you, you get great social media buzz. You know, people, it, it shows being able to trend and people, you want to create programming that people talk about, you know, um, on social media, uh, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um Whatever you you want to make sure that you create these projects. It's gonna create buzz. It's gonna create um, you know noise and and uh, and, and that, like I said, at the end of the day, presentation is everything. So come in with a compelling sizzle. Come in with a compelling deck, which is usually like a a uh, written document of the sizzle reel. A sizzle reel is usually like a seven minute video presentation of your idea, and then you got to sell them. You got to come in with passion. You got to believe in your project. You got to let these guests know that you know this is going to work, and and this is why it's going to work. And uh, when when you do that, you know they believe in it, and they ultimately will will take that risk and invest. Have to run a 24-hour network, so that means they need original programming to be able to sell to advertisers and keep the network running and flowing. And um, but like I said, now becoming a lot more challenged, even though they still have to buy. So that means whoever's selling has to come in with with something so compelling, so different, so unique. Don't don't do it like everybody else. Be different. You know, um, and, and that's what I always say. And, and especially in the reality space. It's scripted, it's a different process and you know, um, you know, but than reality but that's typically how it works, and a lot of a lot of celebrity-driven projects work. You know, when you have stars that are willing to, you know, work with you on a project, um, you know that that's always a plus, depending on where they are in their career. But if you just have an idea about a, a specific world, make sure that it's compelling to the specific audience that you're trying to target. So again, you always got to think about. I'm, I apologize if I'm talking long. No, it's great. But, it's uh, great information. Yeah, you always got to you always got to think about the different networks. So, 
you know, there are a lot of female skewing networks. There are a lot of male skewing networks. You know, you got to kind of pick and choose. So whatever projects you develop, um, you got to think about that. You got to think about the different demographics, 18, 49, 18, 34. You know, those specific demos matter. You know, when you pitch MTV, you're skewing in BET and in Oxygen. Those are very young skewing networks. You know, E is skewed a little older um, to, uh, to, to women. You know, when you pitch Bravo, they're, they're a little bit more flashy. They're, uh, they're, they're um, uh, a different audience than, than, you know, obviously, you know, BDT or home. Home to older, you know, to women. Um, Spike is a very male skewing network. Discovery, Channel, most of them are very male skewing. So all these things you got to factor in. So when you're creating your project, everything's not for every network. But it's always good to say, you know what, if I have one project I'm going to develop, I'm going to develop it for young women. So now I have six networks that I can pitch, um, whether it's MTV, VH1, uh, Oxygen, TV, and WeTV. And, you know, you have options now. You're going to develop something for Nelson, you've got Spike, you got, uh, you know, Esquire, you have um, Discovery and some other networks. So it just really depends on, on the idea so, now, I can go on and on talking about this. No, it, I mean, it was such good information because Oxygen picked up a show, Preachers of uh, L.A., you know, which is more so like a male-driven type of show, which is something I probably would have never thought they would have picked up. But you must have did an excellent job selling it, you and Holly, that they picked up that show. Yeah, I mean, you know, Preachers was different. You know, mm-hmm. it was it was the first of its kind, and we had a bidding war from multiple networks. Mm. Um, we never even thought about oxygen because yes they are a female doing network however in the presentation we involved the women in their lives you know so it wasn't just about the men and if you watch the series you see how these men interact with their wives Mm -hmm. with their girlfriends or uh their their daughters and their kids so it's a little different even though the, the, the the main cast members are male the female uh, supporting characters had a big presence in the show, um, so it, it had a really good balance. Um, so Oxygen, and because it was just such a, a, a new, different, unique show, and no one ever thought that Preachers would ever open up and expose themselves, um, you know, they, they, they were willing to take that chance and, 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 and work with us and partner with us to... Uh, you know, show 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 the series on their network, and it and it ultimately became the highest rated show in network history at Oxygen. Because so, because um, I was going to say, it appears that your shows are you know you have a lot of celebrities in your shows, which also seems to be an easy buy and an easy sell. What about those shows now that that um you know people that want to do a reality show but they're not celebrities? Is it harder for them to break into this business? Yeah, I, I mean, I would say it's a little it, it's a little bit more challenging because you always got to ask yourself, you know, if you don't have a following, it, 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 it's, I, I heard this back in the day um, when I was first creating and developing projects. Networks and viewers want to see extraordinary people doing normal things or normal people doing extraordinary things. And if you're kind of a normal person, you know, it has to be something that's very extraordinary and different. You know, um, not saying people don't, because people love seeing normal people on television, people that they can relate to. It's about the idea. The idea then can, like, you know, there's a lot of shows like Intervention, that's on AD, um, or Quarters. These are kind of older shows, but, um, I mean, there's, there's a ton of shows that work um, on, on, on network television. Uh, Dating Nikki, or... <laughs> or, uh, yeah. you know, there's competition reality, but it, it, it yeah, you, you got to kind of think loud because they don't have a following. Um, when you're celebrity, people want to be able to see the human side of you, you know, or, and, and that's why shows like Love and Hip Hop work because a lot of people are like, man, these celebrities are living like us or we can relate to their relationship problems or this or that. So extraordinary people doing normal things and normal people doing extraordinary things. And if you kind of take that concept and idea, you know, it helps you with, you know, developing programs 
that feature, you know, regular folks. And even with me, like, uh, you know, I've had a, um, I wouldn't say this is really, uh, it, it wasn't really celebrity driven, but um, I had a show, the first show I sold was called Vindicated. It was about people wrongfully convicted mm-hmm. of crime. The now, show. these are normal people, but they, but they have been in, you know, uh, you know, really tough positions in their lives, and their lives have, 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 you know, unexpectedly just changed. So, vindicated with normal people who were in prison for a long period of time, and, uh, you know, ultimately came out and, you know, finally got exonerated, and we showed and, and, and followed their lives, you know, uh, after after they were released from prison, so... I was going to say, you have shared so much because I'm actually working on a project. So you were just giving me so much information. You just see all of the notes I've taken. <laughs> so I'm taking so many <laughs> notes on you today. <laughs> so I want to say thank you so much for sharing. And I want to remind the audience to make sure that they tune in Tuesday, June the 28th to Music Moguls starring Snoop Dogg, Jermaine Dupri, Birdman and Dame Dash. You're going to see as He says, extraordinary people doing normal things. I love how you put that. It's going to be airing 9 p.m. Eastern. And Pacific is produced by Lemuel Plummer and Mr. Ray J. I just had to just say that. So, But thank you so much for coming on the show. I greatly appreciate it and much success to you and also your future endeavors. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And I want to tell you, you and I are actually Facebook friends. And I didn't even realize we were Facebook friends. So I'm going to tag you in the post oh, wow. <laughs> for the show so then you'll know who yeah, I am. Please, please. I yeah, sure please will. Do. Tag me, please. And you have a and you have a great All day right. today. Bye bye. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Thank you.